Can you um, explain, give us the logical deduction from how when we move away from materialism and into information system reality, how that's going to take us to love is the answer? Yeah, well, why, why do we, why is love is the answer a logical condition? Okay. It's a logical condition in, that optimizes the the lowering of entropy in a social system. A whole bunch of IUCs interacting is a social system. It's, it's consciousness interacting with consciousness, right? That's what we are. In that kind of a system, well, let, let me, this is the way I, I normally answer this question. Let's pose an experiment. We have two groups of people. And let's say there's 100,000 people in each group and they're going to be pretty much identical kinds of people, all the same, you know, the, the group has similar kinds of people in it. It's similar levels and similar skills and similar whatever. So the two groups aren't different. So here's a group and we're going to call this the, uh, uh, the love group. Okay. Now the love group is given a certain amount of resources, a certain amount of of space and tools and time and we're going to give them let's say uh, five years and we're going to see what they're going to do with the resources and the situation that they've got so there you are here's the resources you know here's the people see what you do but that's the love group if somebody comes up with a good idea about what to do next they shares it with everybody if somebody comes up with an invention that makes work easier, they share it with everybody. If somebody's better at chopping wood and somebody else is better at raising children, they do that. They cooperate, they work together, they share with their information, they help each other. Somebody gets ill, somebody else moves over to take up the slack. You see, it's a cooperative, caring, loving place. Okay, it f functions like a functional family. They all care about each other. They're all trying to optimize each other's experience. Okay, give them 10 years and what have they built? You know, what have they done? What have they constructed in this reality? You know, let's say they have so many acres and ponds and rivers and things and they can build and they have building materials. You know, what do they, what do they construct? All right, now over here's the other group. It starts with the same group. This is the fear-based group. The fear-based group, because it's a fear-based group, there is no trust. It's a fear-based group. It's all about them. Each one's mission is to get as much as they can and then protect it so other people can't take it away from them. They find out that that's hard to do. So they make coalitions with other people. Okay, let's us work together in cooperation so we can take stuff away from those other individuals because there's only one of them and there's two of us, you see. So gangs form. And the gangs then prey on the smaller gangs or on the individuals. And then pretty soon gangs get together and form bigger gangs to prey on things. So grouping up in size is important so that you can defend yourself and get their stuff and keep your own. And eventually the, the world kind of separates out that way into a bunch of gangs, big gangs. And what's the end result? 3% of the people own 95% of all the stuff and all the big gangs fight with each other. Sounds just like where we live, doesn't it? <laughs> that's the reality we live in. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Right. Okay, that's where fear goes because there is no trust. There's no caring. It's all about self. Yes, they will cooperate, but only so much as it's good for them. It's all what's in it for me. That is not very... Uh, that doesn't reduce entropy very much. Somebody invents something, they keep it to themselves because they can get something for it. They don't share it, not without, you know, something coming to them. Somebody invents something, they don't pass it around because it makes life easier. They keep it to themselves. People who have stuff, they don't want to lose it, they hide it. Takes it out of, takes those resources out of circulation. So there's less of them. 
and so on. We can just go through all the ways that it's dysfunctional, but it's very dysfunctional. And even these gangs are constantly fighting inside with each other. The gangs are unstable. They fight for who's the, le who's the gang leader. So they're killing each other just as well. But then when they get you know, some other gang that they have to fight with, they kind of come together for that, and then they do that fight, and then they divide up the spoils, and then they go back to fighting with each other again. So their life is constant fighting with each other, either with the enemy or with themselves. It's a constant struggle, a constant fight, and the gang leaders get all the stuff, and the gang members at the bottom of the pile do all the work, just like we do here. It's hierarchy. Okay. So now, after you know, 10 years, we'll look and see what these two have done. Well, which one do you think has built up more, has a more functional society, is working at the lower entropy, and which one is full of dysfunction, you know, high entropy, noise, violence, stuff that doesn't work well? Well, it's easy. It's the love group. It's cooperative. They're caring. They build stuff. Somebody, you know, his barn burns down, they all get together and build the barn back up again. Only takes them a couple of days. They look out for each other. So, you see the difference? Yeah. When you have cooperation and caring and about other, that optimizes what those people can do. Now, people who, who have, a, 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 have a certain knee-jerk attitude toward cooperative groups, you know, a cooperative. Sounds sort of like something they had, you know, in Russia, right? We have cooperatives. It's a, like a commune or something, and those are scary words. But that's because they're only scary because we see it through the lens of fear. The lens of fear says a group that's cooperating is the tyranny, tyranny of the committee, you know, tyranny of the, of the, of the collective and that there's less freedom there, less personal freedom because the collective needs a ditch digger and you're standing around, you're it. I don't want to be a ditch digger. Well, we need one, you're it. No, not much freedom. It doesn't work that way. You see, that's only if it's fear-based. And can you show the connection between how materialism causes a fear-based society? Sure, but, but, let, but let me, okay, but let me finish this one. So it's a fear-based view. In a real, caring, loving society, everybody cares that everybody else has the opportunities and the advantages that they want. You see? So I say, I don't want to dig ditches. I want to be a brain surgeon. All right. Do you qualify? Could you do that? All right. You know, go be a brain surgeon. We'll find somebody that is doing something else and needs to get a little exercise, and we'll get them to help us do the ditch. Or we'll get a machine to do the ditch. We'll do something else. But the idea, if it's really caring about everyone else, there isn't anybody that has to do the dirty work. Everybody tries to optimize for everyone else. You have maximum individual freedom, maximum choices. It's an everybody wins kind of thing. If you're unhappy with what you're doing, all you have to say is, I'm really unhappy with what you're doing, and the system will bend over backwards to try to make you happy and find something you like doing. Because that's the nature of a system that cares about you. You see? So that's the way that works. So in that system, you could be a brain surgeon on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and dig ditches or ride on the back of a garbage truck on Thursdays, you know, on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, just because it gives you exercise and fresh air and keeps you fit. Now you can't do that. Now you get in a box and you have to perform in your box. See, so there's more freedom for you to do things in that kind of society. So that's why it's obvious that, that if you have a social system, which we have as consciousness, then love is the optimizing solution of that social system. And fear is kind of the worst way that you could run a family. Mm -hmm. you know, a family full of fear doesn't work well together. Anything full of fear doesn't work well together. And nobody's happy. Everybody has to do things that they have to do because they're afraid of what will happen if they don't. It's different. This has much less free will, much less smaller decision spaces. So that's, the, that's why that logic, and it's easy logic. 
And I, you could probably write that out in mathematics. If you, had, if you could represent both of those, you could make a mathematic model out of that, and you would see that it always breaks out that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the second one was... Can you show... I guess what I want to see is how important it is to understand that this is virtual reality and how that takes us to love is the answer. Um, so right well, now, yeah. Well, virtual reality basis tells us will come out to be consciousness is the computer. Consciousness is a social system. Love is the answer. See, that's kind of the way that logic falls out. Okay. If consciousness, if, if uh, this is a virtual reality, it has to be computed someplace. The only rational place that it can be computed, if this is a virtual reality, that means we're avatars, right? That's what that means. We're avatars. Our bodies are just numbers in a computer. Well, if that's the case, what are these choices? If it, you know, numbers in a computer don't make choices. Something's making a choice. Well, how smart do you have to be to see that consciousness is the thing making the choice, right? And that means consciousness is the computer because in that reality where the, com where the, where the uh, virtual reality is computed, you have to have two things. You have to have a player and a computer. If the computer's consciousness, the player has to be consciousness too because they have to be in the same reality frame. So just like World of Warcraft, the player and the server have to be in the same reality frame, which is this virtual reality, because the player and the computer have to be in a conversation. They're passing data back and forth. The virtual reality is just, a, just the visual that goes with it. They're patient data back and forth, so they have to be in the same frame. So the, the computer and the player have to be in the same frame. And to be in the same frame, they have to be of kind of the same stuff, right? Well, they're consciousness. So the fact that consciousness is computer is a no-brainer. It's just a little bit of logic. And then you know that consciousness is a social system. And you know that social systems optimize with caring and love. So that's the, that's the logical flow through that. Okay. Now, people will resist getting that because it doesn't necessarily go where, in a way that gives the people with power, don't necessarily keep power in that scenario. So there'll be a lot of struggle. But it will go there. It's too obvious not to. And there isn't any other logical solution. There's nothing else that, that works.